remaining if I maintain continuous pressure on the enemy, right? Then I'm then I'm achieving something with my tempo. Okay. Think if you're if you're playing, you know, football, soccer, uh, any any continuous motion sport, ice hockey, field hockey, lacrosse. When you stand still, and now you have to pick up to a full sprint again, that's not easy, right? It takes time to generate speed, right? But if you are continuously moving on the field or on the ice, and now I need to up, I need to accelerate the full speed, it's easier once I'm already an object in motion, right? So think of tempo the same way. As long as I'm continuously in motion, and I have something in my in my organization continuously in motion towards the enemy, I'm maintaining tempo, okay? All right. Audacity. Is that what it means to be like primarily like on the offense? Like you're you're making the first move every time. You're kind of like one step ahead of the enemy in the sense that. Uh, there's like less hesitation and you're kind of pushing them to react to to your movement rather than waiting for them to do something and then you responding to them. Yeah, and to use current uh, mission command doctrine, right, you're taking prudent risk, right? That might might be a little bit, bit of a bold bold action, right? And whenever you're on the offense, that it, that generally is bold, right? It's easier to sit there and do nothing. Concentration. Not getting flustered and like looking at all the possible, like all the possibilities of everything that can take place. So a little bit, little bit different than mental concentration. When I'm talking concentration, I have, I have a point on, on Earth, right? That there's bad guys at. So if I'm going to concentrate, I need to concentrate direct fires. What else I have? Indirect fires. The effects of electronic warfare. Information operations. Diplomacy. Oh, what else I got? Cyber warfare. I really just want to use this drawing pad because it's really cool. All right, and and what what else, you know, whatever else I have at, at my disposal, close combat attack, CAS, right? Concentration is massing the effects of, of what I have on that enemy formation, right? I don't want to go in and piecemeal my attack or not use an asset that I have, right? I, ha I have a lot of great assets and that's what I want to use in there, okay? So that's concentration, All right? Let's talk about surprise. Surprise is pretty difficult to achieve. So how can we achieve surprise? I would say, you know how like we think about what the enemy is going like going to do. Well, I feel like maintain surprise is they're thinking what we're gonna do too, and like mixing that up, like not taking a route that we typically take, or taking the harder route rather than the easier route, or indirect fires that they didn't think we had like just little things that they think that we're going to do and then switching switching them up slightly yeah yeah that's that's a way to look at it um and that that will work you know specifically if you're using the more difficult terrain and the more difficult terrain is probably the more advantageous terrain as well right um 
you and also look compare this to concentration and look at all the assets you have at your disposal that can can aid in achieving surprise on the enemy okay we have we have capabilities to have effects on the electromagnetic spectrum that takes that takes capability away from them so their early detection capability their command and control capabilities um, their their ability to manage their indirect fire networks okay um, their air defense network right so there's there are things that we can do to re eliminate their capabilities with the out even firing around right uh, similarly we we can also tie into some of our indirect fire capabilities that are that are long range right especially we start getting into rocket artillery right we can re re reach out and touch you know beyond 30 kilometers okay all right, don't and don't default back to we're just going to shoot attackums missiles at them. Attackums are giant rockets that come out of MLRS, right? And they reach out like 70 kilometers. Don't make that part of your maneuver plan. You're not going to get attackums, okay? Uh, but you're you're going to be able to tie into some of these assets that can help you achieve surprise by re eliminating the enemy's capability, right? And then when you combine that with we're using the more difficult, the more military advantageous terrain, we can achieve surprise. Right. All right, so we've got cool characteristics of the offense up there. Okay. Let's talk forms of maneuver. You guys remember these? Uh, what you got? It's like the the turn envelop like in envelopment. Um, I remember your class last year with Sergeant V. It was all on the board. Now I have to look it up. I'll look it up. This is what's the last one? Frontal. I got frontal in there. Oh. Infiltration. Yeah. There it is. All right. Pre pretty pretty easy here, right? Envelopment. Quick definition of envelopment. Who's got it? It's what all of us cadets call a flank. So <laughs> it's when it's when one element identifies the flank of the enemy and then moves out and around to envelop that flank. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? What you guys call a, a flank, right? But flank is a location, right? So there, there's an, there's an envelopment, right? If I'm doing a turning movement, what is that? that when you like place an obstacle and then you're making them you're purposely turning them no nope, because they're in the defense generally here uh, okay uh, you're right all right so a turning movement i might come and attack here i just made that error but that's okay okay so when i do that what's the enemy need to do He's got to do kind of the same thing, right? He's got to he's got to move around, and it doesn't like it because I'm at the edge of the screen, right? But he's got to come over here. So I've moved him out of position, right? So a turning movement moves your enemy out of his prepared defensive position or his preferred preferred location to fight from, and makes him fight somewhere else that's probably more advantageous to you. Okay, so that's your turning movement. All right, frontal attack, pretty self-explanatory, right? What's the problem with the frontal attack? 
career or security? No, all kinds of security is a problem. Starts being a problem in a frontal attack, right? Right. Except for to the front, right? So if I'm conducting a frontal attack, I'm coming here, right? So where is the enemy concentrated his effects? Probably in a kill box that's somewhere around here. That he's got indirect fire targets in. Right, he might have. He probably has an obstacle effort in there as well. That's supposed to achieve obstacle effect for him. Right. Right. So if I'm conducting a frontal attack, it's possible. But what do I need to have? To conduct a frontal attack. Have like secured like security. I say surprise. Surprise helps, right? You're on the right track. Go back to those characteristics of the offense. Probably a fast tempo. Yep. I'm really gonna need all four of those, right? Because he's able to bring a lot, a lot, or all of his assets to bear, right? I'll drag front. And so I need surprise. I need to concentrate all, all of my capabilities as well. This is pretty audacious conducting a frontal attack, right? And I have to own the temple, tempo of the battle. I have to, I have to take that from him, right? And I also am going to need an, an overwhelming, uh, combat power ratio to be able to do this right we've talked we've talked about relative combat power before right all right i need overwhelming relative combat power <laughs> right because he's got indirect fire, got obstacles he's got direct fire i have that too but i'm that three to one ratio you're going to have to look at that and see if if you need more than a three to one when you're conducting the frontal attack, because you're probably going to need more than a three to one ratio to be successful. All right, but always assess your enemy, right? Have a have a thorough IPB. Okay. Penetration. What's a penetration? Uh, I may be, uh, I'm just guessing, but uh, it's like uh, focusing your uh, force in like one part of the enemy line and spearheading through that enemy line. Yep, it's attacking along a narrow front, right? And, and, and achieving success. And, and when we start talking breach here in a minute, that's a, a penetration, right? Okay. And then infiltration. That'd be something like special forces would do to take out a high profile target or steal intelligence. Generally, that's how, that's how we think of it, right? Um, enter, entering a very a small front or um, you know, undetected, very small number, limited number of, of personnel um, to acquire information or to cause you know, some significant damage to an enemy asset, right? So a little bit, you know, you're probably not going to do this with a, a tank company, right? Although, you know, a, a tank raid, they have happened, right? But generally with a platoon or smaller element um, going in and conducting the infiltration, depends on the enemy, right, force that we're infiltrating um, is, going to, is going to make a difference in that as well, right? Okay. Questions thus far? Is frontal attack like the hardest one to control? I'm assuming. Frontal attack. Frontal attack's pretty easy to control because you can see everything, right? But if I, can, like, see, if I can see everything that I have conducting the a frontal attack, and I'm the platoon leader, company commander, that's 
that's that's easy, right? It just seems like you're at a disadvantage when they're setting up a defense and then you would be like basically in like a kill zone. Yes, right? It's easier for you to control it until everyone starts dying, right? But it's easier to control. Right? If all if all my if all my assets are when would you conduct a frontal attack though? Like when you have overwhelm you have overwhelming combat power. Okay. All right. If that's my rifle squad, is that easy to control? Yeah. Right. Now, if I have, a tank platoon here. Uh, right, and then I have a tank platoon here. Doing this into this, and I have a mechanized infantry platoon. Is you know conducting a follow and assume, and this distance here, you know, is, is whatever five five kilometers, because I'm conducting a turning movement or or an envelopment. You've lost control. Well, you haven't lost control. This is actually pretty easy to control once you're. Once you're used to doing it. Right? Because I have a lieutenant here and a lieutenant here and a lieutenant here. And I'm company commander and I'm my tank, my tank is sitting back here somewhere. This is fine. I'm comfortable with this. Right. right, but this there is a a higher degree of complexity to controlling this than on a frontal attack, right? Because the frontal attack doesn't have all have the tyranny of distance like that. It it should have some distance still to it, right? Or else one you know just a couple artillery rounds can destroy a lot of your capability, right? But your frontal attack's not going to look. Quite the same. Your frontal attack is going to, you know, you'll have a platoon and a support by fire here. Right? And I might not even attack. I might just use a, an ABF position, right? I might not even maneuver. I might maneuver, maneuver that support by fire, maneuver to an attack by fire. Right. And I might just move my Mac infantry platoon over here. And I can control I can control that rather easily for my tank. So if I'm doing something like this on a frontal attack that's got support by fire and attack by fire, right? I have an advantage of standoff range. Okay. Like I'm I'm attacking some enemy mechanized infantry with a tank heavy company team well freaking abrams tank has has a longer max effective range okay so then their 30 millimeter cannon so i can conduct a frontal attack because i can i can just sit back at distance and just start and just pick them off over time okay or I have, and I have time. I don't have to. I don't have to be on an objective. I don't have to. I'm enemy focused instead of terrain focused. I can sit back. I can sit back and fight them from a distance. Okay. Or if I'm, if I'm tied, if I'm tied to a timeline and adjacent units who need to utilize this piece of terrain for a follow-on operation, I can't do a frontal attack. It's going to take too long, right? I need. I need to maneuver and, and continue to move and maintain maintain tempo through movement and maneuver rather than from distance right you know so a couple different ways to look at it
So I did say that we're going to whenever we um, conduct an offensive operation, assume that you're going to breach an obstacle, right? So just assume, use that, use that as a planning assumption. Does anyone know the acronym and the words we we use as our mnemonic device to plan a breach? You guys remember these? Been taught them? All right, so we go into a, a breach drill. You heard those before yet? Anything picking up? What's the first thing you have to do, right, when attacking an enemy objective? Or enemy element. Suppress. All right. There you go. Suppress. Before you begin your assault, what do you want to what do you want to do to the to the enemy? Observe. The opposite of observe. The enemy's trying to observe you, so what do you want to do to them? Obstruct. Oh. Obscure. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Obscure. Okay. All right, suppress, obs obscure. What do we need to do when we're crossing a, a danger area? Security. All right, secure. Uh, secure the near side of the obstacle. And then what are we going to do to the obstacle? Reduce. Yeah, we're going to reduce it. And then what we're going to do? Advance. Assault. There you go. Assault. All right. That's what that's that's what we're doing. All right, suppress, obscure, secure, reduce, and assault. All right. So how how do we do this? All right. Suppress fairly easy, right? You know what this is. We're gonna set a support by fire. We want to have some kind of element in here. You can use mech after you can use a tank platoon. All right, it's going to depend on your on the threat on the on the other side of the obstacle, right? Great thing about mechanized infantry, Bradley fighting vehicle, 25 millimeter chain gun, high rate of fire. You have uh, M919 depleted uranium sabo rounds, right? Or you have high explosive 25 millimeter rounds and you have tow missiles. To fire a tow missile, you need to be from a stationary position. You cannot fire a tow missile on the move. Mechanized infantry can work very well in a support by fire position because of this, right? All right, so we're gonna suppress there, okay? Whatever enemy I have over here, I'm, I'm gonna draw a couple, a couple bad guys, a few bad guys, okay? And bad, bad guys, they got this sweet obstacle effort. All right, obstacles, we draw them in green. All right. Yeah, and we have to determine where we want to breach. Okay. So we want to breach. We'll just say we want to breach here. I need to obscure. How do I, what do I have that can provide obscuration? You guys know? How do I obscure? Smoke. Smoke, right? 
How do I get smoke? Can you can you call it in and have mortar rounds, smoke rounds? Yeah, we have mortar delivered smoke. Pretty short duration now. What else? All right, similarly, we got artillery delivered smoke. It'll be a longer duration, okay? Because those are 155 millimeter rounds. And not only is it 155 millimeters around, right? But the canister's longer, right? 120 mortars, not that big, right? So that's not a whole lot of smoke inside of there. I get a 155 round that's like this, that's a whole lot of smoke that's gonna burn, okay? Other assets, what other assets do we have? For smoke. Uh, isn't there? Uh, isn't there like a vehicle that uh, what is it? Uh, disposes of smoke. Yeah, we have we have generated smoke. Um, when I when I was your age, all right, we had a it's a one one three variant called the wolf the Wolverine or the Wolf. I'm sorry, just the Wolf. Um, the Wolf was in our chemical companies, right? So we had a chemically generated smoke asset, right? It had big smoke generators that burned fog oil or, um, you know, so just as na a nasty oil that had some graphite and other crap mixed in the oil that when you burned it, created a huge, you know, cloud of smoke that could roll across the battlefield. Um, to use that though, you have to, and to use any smoke, you need to have really favorable weather conditions, um, right? Because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to drop in my smoke, artillery delivered smoke, and then the wind just blows it out of the way, right? So you, you do have to consider, and your fire support officer has to have to consider uh, the effects of meteorological data on, or on any of your smoke, right? Uh, but especially artillery delivered or mortar delivered. Uh, smoke generator tracks, we, I haven't seen them in 15 years, right? The last time I small, saw a, a smoke, smoke generator in the Army was like 2004, right? It's an asset we need. It's a capability we need to get back into our, into our force. Um, and similarly, we have, we have smoke pots. It's like a five gallon bucket when you pull the lid off of it it starts generate generating smoke um so you can use that for a a point uh, a smaller point breach right on a like on a dismounted infantry uh breach smoke pots work we haven't manufactured smoke pots in like 50 years and we have a finite number remaining in our inventory um another another asset that we need is you know a infantry based obscuration capability and then you do have you do have uh smoke grenade launchers that are on our tanks and our bradley's 113s paladins um it's really kind of a final protective fire kind of smoke obscuration because uh, it doesn't have range when you i hit the button on it on a tank or a bradley they'll launch my smoke grenades they only they only shoot out like 20 feet in front of me right shoot out it's red phosphorus grenades come out there, generate smoke, right? So I can displace from that position and move somewhere else. It's not generating a, a, a significant screen that I could use to obscure the enemy, you know, from, from something like this. It's a very limited duration, allows me to, to conduct a survivability move, okay? So really our, our, our smoke, you really want artillery delivered smoke when you're conducting a, a breach, uh, mortar smoke, can work and it helps, but it's not as good. Okay. Yeah. So here we want we want the artillery smoke, right? And we do want that. We want to shoot that in, in somewhat of a linear target, right? And while, talk, while we're talking about artillery, all right. Also, part of our suppression is I, I probably want some kind of indirect fire. There's a target group, right? I'm, 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 I need some indirect fire targets, artillery and mortar, right? To, to help 
suppressed because I that's how I that's how I achieve concentration. Right? I need concentration. So there's suppress. I got a platoon suppressing. I have indirect fire targets suppressing. I have obscuration in, right? In, in terms of linear smoke target. Don't worry. Your fire support officer understands that his smoke target is going to be linear. All right. If not, your company commander will fire that person, right, and send them back to the artillery world. All right. But but we know we know that smoke target is going to be linear. Okay. All right. We got to secure. How do we secure? Smoke's in. Smoke's building up. Now I got to secure. How do I do this? Isn't it by force? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I have to use maneuver, direct fire assets, right? I'm generally going to do this with some kind of tank platoon, right? And on the near side of the breach, I'm going to take this tank platoon, right? And I'm going to have a section of tanks securing the near side. Okay. How many platoons are usually involved? Depends depends on the, the the size of the breach we need to put in, right? This this I'm assuming is about 100 meters in depth. I can do this with a company, and I can create one lane. Okay. If I need multiple lanes because I got to put a brigade through this a, a more complex obstacle, right? I'm I'm going to need like another brigade to breach. Right, because I'm going to need each battalion to create a lane, right? So I'm going to have three lanes to be able to do that, right? So it's just going to depend on the enemy obstacle that we need to breach, uh, the complexity of it, the, the depth of it, right? and, the, and the enemy force on the other side, right? So if I'm just keeping this at a company level, right, I have, I have an obstacle that's 100 meters or less in depth. All right, maybe 200 meters. I can use um, multiple charges to get through that. All right, but this this platoon starts to go on here. All right, section here. All right, so I've secured the near side. I may even do that with an entire platoon, right? Which is not bad. All right, so I got the other section of tanks right here. Boom, I've secured the near side of the obstacle. Okay, so now I have two companies. I have a mech infantry, pl or sorry, platoons, a mech infantry platoon here and a tank platoon here. Suppression, suppression, obscuration, secure the near side, what's next? Reduce. Okay, reduce. I need to come into here and reduce this obstacle. All right, obstacle reduction. How do we do it? Blow it up. All right, we call that explosive, right? I, I can use chemical chemicals to create an explosion that reduces obstacles right that's cool what are the assets we have that do that especially in, we're talking now we're talking mechanized right in this in this situation so what's that asset called we know our explosive our yeah. mechanized explosive capability to reduce obstacles is it engineer or EOD? It's it's an engineer asset, not EOD. This is not we're not worried about explosive ordnance here, right? We're worried about blowing something up, reducing an obstacle. Darling up. Great, great piece of kit. 
I guess there's no I in there. It's just. Miklik, you heard of this? The Miklik mind clearing line charge. All right, imagine a piece of deck cord that's 110 meters long that has a bunch of blocks of C4 hanging on it. So I have a, a, a vehicle, a trailer, All right, let me let me see if I can if I can share this. All right. You see that bad boy now? This is a Miklik. This one's trailer mounted and it's one one box. Okay? This one's right, one so one line charge is towed by a 113. And within here, this is the rocket. All right, so they come up, they raise this rocket, fire a rocket, and it pulls about 110 meters of deck cord with C4, blocks of C4 on it, forward, right? Across the depth of a, of a, of a minefield or a complex obstacle, okay? And then when somebody hits the button, that giant thing explodes. Right, and when it explodes, it looks something like this. Right, you guys see that? Boom. Huge fireball. What's that? What does that create when I when I do that? When I use an explosive breach asset, what am I doing to the obstacle? reducing it and you're also creating more like a, like it's also obscuring again for more vision from the enemy yeah you do get some of that effect out of it but primarily i'm the explosive line charge is creating an overpressurization zone okay that is designed that is designed to detonate mines right and now also that will cut through if they if they have it integrated with wire and mines and, and pickets and and other stuff in there it's going to cut through that as well right so it's going to create a lane that's probably about going to be about 10 meters wide all right so explosively we're going we, we're creating a lane approximately 100 meters in depth and approximately 10 meters wide we've created built an overpressurization zone up mines and crap that's in that lane for about 10 meters wide. That's our explosive breach, okay? I also need to breach it again, mechanically, right? All right, we're gonna conduct a mechanical breach as well. All right, so the engineers come up, conduct an explosive breach, and they're gonna be followed by more tanks. All right. Tanks can be outfit with plows and rollers. Okay. So when I get a, I get another tank, a tank up here with a plow on it or a mine roller. All right. So there's a tank. This is a tank with a plow. We're doing a little ops terms and graphics here too, right? That's that's a tank with a roller. Right. So within a inside a tank company, one of your platoons is going to be set up on the MTO to conduct bre a mechanical breach. That platoon is going to have a plow and a roller in it, and then it, and then your other platoons are going to have a plow a plow in each, right? Because we need redundant mechanical assets. We never count that the explosive breach is going to take care of every mine that's in there. We need to go through. Right, because it may have just taken a mine and flipped it five feet up in the air and it flipped upside down, but it's still an active anti-tank mine, right? So I take my plow in and the plow digs into the earth and pulls it up, right? So if I have mines that are buried 
the plow is going to pick those up and, and move them out of the way. I'm a believer of, of using the plow over the roller. Doctrine says I should proof this lane with the roller first. Okay. Doctrine also tells me a roller is going to take two hits. A plow is going to take one hit from a mine. And that will render it combat ineffective. That's a baseline. In reality, they'll both take more than one hit. Okay. So I prefer to use a tank to proof this lane because when because I, I need to on the on the far side of this obstacle, what do I need to do? Just like when I cross any danger area, I need to set up far side security, right? The engineers do have a vehicle. The assault breaching vehicle, it has two mic clicks on it and it has a plow or a roller. It's 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 modular, right? That could proof this lane. But it doesn't have a gun on it, right? Not of anything of consequence like a 120 millimeter cannon that's on an Abrams tank. The assault breaching vehicle is an Abrams chassis, right? So it can, on the battlefield, it can keep up speed and maneuverability with an Abrams. But I, I'm, I don't have a 120 millimeter main gun on it, right? Abrams does. So I like, I still would prefer to proof my lane with an Abrams tank because when I get on the far side, I can I can establish far side security with tanks, right? And then prepare for the last the last piece of this, which is the assault, right? Inherent in a breach, I have support, I have suppression, right? And the support by fire on near side security. That's another support by fire with suppression. Right. As soon as I start breaching, right, near side security is not shooting. Right. He's going to cease fire. OK, because I want to start to breach. And now I because now I have friendly assets going in front of my near side security. My proofing element is also my far side establishes my far side security. Right. And if I only have three platoons, you know, plus, you know, two tank and one Mac infantry and my engineer platoon, if that's all I have. To conduct the assault, I need another company now to go through this breach lane and conduct the assault. Right, that's preferred because this enemy, this enemy capability on the on the far side is probably, you know, built with some kind of trench system. That enables him to rapidly move in between battle positions. Or he's in a prepared defense, right? So he's used his engineer assets and dug in one tier or two tier fighting positions with primary, alternate, supplementary, subsequent battle positions, right? So I, I really want some kind of combined arms element to go in and conduct the assault on this enemy on the far side of the obstacle. If I have to do it myself, I'm probably going to do it with this mech infantry platoon. Right, because now my suppression is here, and that enables me to move them up through. Okay, especially especially if my IPB my analysis is determined that the enemy has infantry on the far side, has a trench network on the far side. Right, tanks don't enter and clear trenches and bunkers. Doesn't work. Okay. We can there we have ammunition types that we can fire into a bunker and anything that's inside that bunker is probably ineffective now, right? But really I want infantry to enter trenches and bunkers and clear that. Okay. Tanks can support that, but infantry really need to do it. Does that make sense? All right. The only difference is if you do this in the light infantry world, right? Instead of a Miklik, you're going to, what's the asset that we have uh, for our light and striker formations to conduct an explosive breach? You've heard, you've all heard of it. You're just not thinking of it right now. 
You've heard of the Bangalore torpedo? Hawk, you got to you got to start reading books. Okay. Right. It's it's basically a man portable explosive line charge, right? That's only it's only give us, you know, a couple meters of depth. Right, rather than a hundred meters of depth through an obstacle. I have a fun fundamentally the same. Doesn't matter what type of organization you're in, fundamentally this is the same, right? When we when we breach, we still suppress, obscure, secure, reduce, and assault. Doesn't matter if it's tanks, if it's infantry, it's striker. Right. Type of formations are irrelevant. The fundamentals are the same. Right. Forms and maneuver are the same. The characteristics of the offense are the same. Okay. Let's be white. So what is the goal after you breach? Like like you're are you just securing that and staying there or are they just like getting the hell out? You're gonna secure you're gonna secure that as you know, and like I said, ideally here another company comes through and, and assaults. And you're gonna maintain security. Because ultimately there's there are follow-on operations on the on the other side of this obstacle. Okay. This obstacle needs to completely go away eventually. All right, so some some poor schmuck engineer unit's gonna completely reduce this obstacle. All right, so someone's going to secure it until such a point that we have assets in place who can secure themselves and reduce the op the obstacle. All right, but someone has to provide security up to that point. So they're essentially defending it after. Possibly, or you might just be there for a short period of time until another unit comes up in and re re relieves you in place, so you can continue moving on with your parent organization right towards the next the next objective yeah but if you're conducting the breach you're going to you're going to be there securing that the far side the near and far side for a while right because the other thing the enemy might may want to do is close the close the breach that you made right he built this obstacle for a reason he may want to close that breach lane. And he can do that. You know, by by a counterattack to seize this piece of train again and put the obstacle in, you know, with it with a human effort. And you also have artillery delivered mines. All right. So as soon as you breach this, he might he might shoot. Artillery delivered mines and reseed this minefield. And then we have to breach it again. Right? Because I mentioned we get we keep breach assets. We have redundant breach assets. Right? So this this tank platoon on the near side security has another plow. Okay. The engineers should right click. Right. So if the if the enemy does reseed this minefield with artillery delivered scatterable mines, you have the ability to breach it again. Explosively and then mechanically proofing it. Other questions? Hawks out nope, nope, good. Everyone hanging out in Kent right now? Me too. Nothing? So you guys have the attack at Brandenburg tactical vignette, right? That's the one I sent out a few weeks ago, the one Zarlinga did. I know Hawk has it because I emailed to her, and I know Zarlinga has it because he did it. I don't have it. I don't think I have it, but I have to go check. Okay. Take a look. Take a look at that 
that tactical vignette again. You know, and, he, and even Zarling goes, Seth, take a look at it because now, now with this information here, does this generate different options or a different way for you to look at how you could conduct that that mission? Just using these the fundamentals here. Okay. So what do we got next? What's next Thursday or Friday? Whatever it is. We have anything? We actually do anything? Was it the 13th? Take a look at that vignette. Hawk, send that back around to the, the folks here. Since you're the only ones that give a crap about your own professional development. All right. And I, I would I would like to to see you guys brief how you would conduct that attack in Brandenburg, right? And and, and use this, okay? And acknowledge you're not going to be one hundred percent correct, accurate in how you do it. That's okay. You know, can you apply the, the you know the the fundamentals of the breach, the forms of maneuver? All right, the characteristics of the offense against that vignette. All right, and just you can do it in PowerPoint, two, three slides is all you need to get through that. All right, and, and apply this towards solving solving that little tactical problem. Okay. Questions. Plan for next Friday at 10, 10 to 11, same bat time, same bat channel. I'm not going to invite anyone else. They can, it's, you, you're the only four cool kids. Guys got anything for me? What books should I read? What books? Yeah. What do you want, what do you want to know? I mean, anything that could help. Help what? What do you need help with? There's a lot of there's a lot of great books out there. I need a lot of help. I I know you need a lot of help. 